Hey, 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 and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we are looking at the trolley rail carriages and how the design of the trolley rail carriages with the trolley rail system locks the top frame into the mid frame, keeping you and all of your sim peripherals safe, stopping the top frame from being able to leave the mid frame and an accident to happen and for you to be hurt or your peripherals to be damaged. Now this kind of comes at the request of one of my viewers on my channel. Big shout out to that guy. He's doing a modification on his existing um, motion sim. He's gonna put in a rail system and he wanted to have a look at, a close look at how my trolley rail system works, the way that the bearings uh, work on the top and the bottom of the trolley rails to actually lock the top frame to the mid frame. So that's what this video is all about. I'm going to show this firsthand in game very shortly. Once I've talked about a few things uh, and why this design of the trolley rail system has been designed this way. So it's a pertinent time for Warbinger84 to ask me to do a video like this because the next couple of tutorials in the 4 degree of freedom motion sim build are all about the construction and build of the trolley rail carriages. So this is going to showcase in this video what the carriages look like when they're actually in operation once built and being used in game. Now I've chosen the Circuit de Charade track in R Factor 1 to do this demo. This is quite a rough track. The road meshing for this track is really, really rough. So the heave really comes through in the rig. It really pushes the rig to the extremes. There's a lot of really sharp bends and a lot of banking in this track so it means that there's a lot of roll in the top frame at the same time as a lot of heave at the same time as a lot of traction loss and at the same time as a lot of surge and it's when all of those uh, dynamics are impacting on the motion sim that you need a system like this and a design like this to keep you safe now this would be even amplified more if you were playing any of the dirt rally games with the dirt rally games there's a lot of big jumps the roads and the meshing is a lot rougher. You've got a lot of really sharp corners. There's a lot of roll. And so you would definitely need a setup like this setup and like my design. If you were going to play a lot of dirt rally, you must have something that keeps your top frame locked to your mid frame and stops the trolley rail system from leaving your mid frame. Now at the very end of the video, I only do two laps, guys. I go into a third lap and then in about I don't know, 500 metres, I crash, okay? And I've kept that in there because it's when you crash that uh, the motion sim can really go quite crazy, especially if you roll and stuff like that. It's not actually too bad uh, in this particular scenario, but I've had scenarios where at high speeds I've crashed, I've had uh, collisions with other cars, or I've just crashed off a track going really fast, rolled the car, and the motion sim can um, go into some real extremes in its rolls, left and right and left and right. If you didn't have a locked in trolley rail system, your top frame would definitely be on the floor with you and all of your stuff, uh, not in a very good way. Okay guys, well let's have a look at this now working with the game, a close look at the trolley rail system and the trolley carriages working in game. So Warbinger84, I think that's how you pronounce it, mate. Apologies uh, if I've got that wrong. Warbinger84, he has a YouTube channel where he's starting to post some uh, progress of his motion sim uh, modifications. He's got a pretty cool seat shaker sort of setup with a with one of those um, seatbelt restraining setups. So then seatbelt tightens and stuff when you're driving. It's really really cool. Make sure you check out his channel when you get a chance and have a look at uh, his build. It's pretty cool. A lot of it's made out of timber, so it's quite accessible uh, for people that may want to use timber instead of metal. So make sure you check out Warbinger84's channel. Anyway, Warbinger, for you, it's you're not going to see a lot of uh, roll actually in the trolley rail system because its inherent design stops that from happening. Um, the tension that's put on those top 
threaded rods and the bottom threaded rods that bring the bearings together on the rail are tensioned uh, precisely so then it's got free movement but absolutely no end play no slop no movement but as you can see from the pedal cage there where my feet are you can just see my feet you can see how much the top frame is moving is rolling to the left and the right during this race I was constantly being hit from behind with the other cars that was jolting me the whole time um, and it, it's hard for that to sort of come through in the video the inertia and stuff that you feel obviously you can't experience that in the video but it's real the inertia from being hit from uh, going into those, um, ba from banking left, banking right, from hitting uh, bumps and stuff like that with the heave. It's real, you feel it all the time. If that trolley rail system wasn't set up like this, with those underpinning bearings on the bottom side of the rails, that top frame and that motor mount you can see there, that would be always lifting. It'd be always on the edge of coming off the rails. There's no way I would have ever put this together without knowing that uh, it was actually gonna be underpinned by those bearings and the top frame couldn't go anywhere. I mean, you can see it yourself uh, as you keep watching the video, how, how violent things can get. And this is without a crash, you know? When you crash at high speeds, it just goes bananas. The motion seem goes bananas, rocking left and right. It would be straight off the mid-frame if it wasn't pinned on there with the system the way that it's designed. And this really needed to be designed like this for my particular motion sim because my motion sim stands quite high. So the centre of gravity on my motion simulator is quite high because of my really large uni joint. That basically sets the tone for uh, how high my finishing height is for my top frame. That and of course, the actual um, front pivot caster. That's quite a tall pivot caster. So that also adds height to um, the top frame, the finishing height. So this was really, really needed for this particular design for the way that my whole motion sim is designed. If your motion sim has a lower profile because your uni joint's more compact or whatever, well, you're going to have less inertia, I guess. You know, you'll, it should follow that you would have less inertia because you've got a lower profile. But in saying that, you can see here, guys, how much movement is experienced in the top frame at speeds on a rough track. And so therefore, even with a low profile motion sim, I think that it would be a really, really good idea to make sure you have an underpinned trolley carriage. Honestly, with all the forces that uh, you deal with in the motion sim that I deal with when I when I play with my motion sim, I, I'm nervous uh, in my motion sim, even as it is, even with my design and knowing that I've got a really solid design, sometimes I get a little bit worried that something's going to break, that uh, something's going to give. Nothing ever does. So if I didn't have something like this set up uh, with this trolley rail system the way that it is, if you want a surge axis, you'd be stressed the whole time. You'd be just worried about that the whole time. You wouldn't be able to really relax and actually enjoy your game and really get into your game and, and get immersed. You'd just be worried the whole time that um, your, your rails were going to um, come off and that you were going to hurt yourself. Okay guys, stop your video and rewind it right back to that little point there where we just came through that very small chicane. That's a classic scenario of if you didn't have your trolley rail system and your carriages underpinned onto your rail where your top frame could easily leave the rails, okay? Anywhere or any time in a game where your car will get air, so where it goes over a jump and it has air, 
there's going to be a really big risk of your top frame lifting and coming off the rails if it's not underpinned. That's a great example of what I'm talking about and something that you would really need to watch out for and consider if you're going to try and build something like this without your carriage being underpinned. Okay guys, at the top of this hill, uh, I lose control of the car and we roll and that's the end of the video. Well, I hope this has been informative, War Binger 84, and anybody else that's been watching, this will give you some confidence going forward. This is what you're building and it's worthwhile in the end. You guys stay safe, stay healthy and take it easy out there.